Hello everybody and welcome to springtime at the Ned Smith Center for Nature and Art. My name is Hunter Kaufman and I am the Nature and Arts Educator here at the Center. Myself and Emily, our Education Coordinator, are really excited to be able to bring to you our springtime wildflower walk virtually this year. We're a little upset we had to cancel the in-person walk, but we really hope you enjoy our virtual tour of wildflowers around the center and around central Pennsylvania. And we hope you use this as an opportunity to get outside, enjoy the nice weather, and find some wildflowers for yourself. So without further ado, we hope you enjoy. Virginia bluebells are named for that large, round, bell-shaped flower. They can be identified by not only that flower, but the large, round, ovate leaves. And a really cool thing about the bluebells and the rest of the forget-me-not family is that oftentimes the flowers can change color. So if you look at the flower buds of a Virginia bluebell, they start out actually pink, not blue. But as those flower buds mature and the pH of the plant tissues changes from more acidic to more basic, those flowers are going to start to change from that pink color to the blue color. And the more acidic soil that this plant is grown in, the deeper blue those flowers will be. The Virginia bluebells can form dense colonies along the ground and can spread either sexually or asexually. But a lot of times the way this plant is spread is by seed. Each flower on the plant forms a small little nutlet with four seeds in it, and those seeds can either be spread by animals or simply fall off the plant and grow right next to the flowers next year. Because of that unique bell shape to the flower, Virginia bluebells have a lot of different pollinators, including bumblebees, flies, native bees, butterflies, and some people have even seen hummingbirds coming down to get some nectar from those flowers. The yellow dogtooth violet, a pretty counterintuitive name, but you probably know it a lot better as the yellow trout lily. This is one of the most common springtime wildflowers we're going to find in Pennsylvania. And this is a native flower to the United States covering pretty much the whole eastern half of the country. Now, if you look behind me here, you'll see a lot of little green leaves along the ground. And these green leaves are actually trout lily. Trout lily gets its name from the leaves because if you look really close at them, they're not just green. They're kind of brown and gray and mottled and spotted. And a lot of people kind of compare it to the pattern on a brook trout. So that's where trout lily gets its name. The trout lily is also colonial, meaning this plant forms huge colonies across the ground. It's not too good at reproducing sexually from seed, so instead it reproduces asexually by these colonies spreading underground and the flowers emerging. The trout lily is also unique in that when it does spread by seed, that seed is spread by ants and these plants are specially adapted for dispersal by ants. The seeds of the trout lily have a little fleshy organ on them called an eliosome that attracts ants. And the ants pick up these seeds, bring them back to their colonies where they feast on that fleshy organ, and then they throw out the rest of the seed in their scrap pile where then the flower can emerge in the spring. This form of dispersal is a really neat example of symbiosis. Just like most other wildflowers, this trout lily is ephemeral, meaning that flower is only going to last a couple weeks during the spring. Dutchman's breeches, I think, are some of the coolest wildflowers we're going to find here in Pennsylvania during the spring and summer. Dutchman's breeches are named for the shape of the flower, just like a lot of our wildflowers, but this shape is really unique. The flowers are kind of in two parts and they look like an upside down pair of breeches or pants. Because of this unique shape of the flower, 
Dutchman's breeches rely on bumblebees to be pollinated and just like the trout lily, rely on ants to be spread. Their seeds have that eliosome organ on it that those ants really like to eat. Dutchman's breeches can be identified by the multiple flowers along a stem that again look like pants. A lot of times you can find Dutchman's breeches growing in rich mountain soils. And another interesting fact about these flowers is not only are there native populations growing here in the United States, but there's also kind of a disjunct population growing somewhere out in the Colombian basin. How it got there, we're not sure. The celandine poppies right beside me here are another really cool wildflower that we can find in Pennsylvania in the eastern part of the United States. They grow this brilliant yellow four-petaled flower and I think the leaves kind of look a bit like maple leaves. It is a poppy, part of the poppy family, but it's named for the greater celandine, a related plant in Europe that kind of looks similar. Another thing to note with the woods poppy is I think some of the anatomy is actually quite pretty. If you look at a flower bud, you can see the single knobby stigma sticking out, and the outside of the bud is covered in this white translucent hair. On the flower, that knobby stigma is surrounded by lots of stamen. Again, this is another wildflower spread by ants, so those seeds develop with the eliosomes on them, and then the ants can harvest them for food and leave the seed behind to grow. The mountain azalea is a woody shrub from the southeastern portion of the United States, but here in Pennsylvania, we're just about at its northernmost range. In the springtime through the end of March and into April and May, this shrub produces a very pretty pink flower that has five petals and five very long stamen that hang out of the flower, and that's how this plant can be identified. Those flowers are a favorite of hummingbirds and butterflies. In the southeast, this shrub can form large colonies and is typically found in very moist soils, maybe at the edge of a wetland or a stream. But up here in Pennsylvania, it can more so be found in small patches, like the one behind me here on Deer Run Trail. The mountain laurel, Pennsylvania's state flower, can be found on the east coast of the United States from Maine all the way down to Florida. This flower is in the same family as the mountain azalea and it's part of the rhododendron group. Here in Pennsylvania, mountain laurel likes rocky slopes and well-drained areas, so this area behind me here up in the mountains is a perfect spot to find it. Now the mountain laurel's flower isn't quite blooming when the mountain azaleas is. Instead, the mountain laurel blooms just a little bit later in mid to late May. It is very fitting that the mountain laurel is Pennsylvania state flower because if you've ever seen a bloom, they are absolutely beautiful. Now the plant itself is a small woody shrub that looks like a miniature version of rhododendron, another common woodland shrub you can find in the woods here in Pennsylvania. And another common name you might have heard for mountain laurel is spoonwood, coming from the Native Americans' use of the wood of mountain laurel to create spoons.
Thank you for tuning in to the Netsmith Center's virtual wildflower walk. We were really happy to be able to bring this to you and we hope you take this as an opportunity to either come on out and visit the center and find some wildflowers for yourself or to explore a natural area or a garden near you. We hope you enjoyed and until next time.